part two, Monday, September 18th. The first day of school, take two. Mom drove me to Tangerine this morning at 7.30. We drove past the lime greenhouses and the citrus packing plant. We passed through a small downtown area and then pulled up to a concrete building that looked like a block long post office. We parked across the street and I reminded her, I'll be at soccer practice until five. I hope. I hope so too, Mom replied. Look, I really should go in with you this morning. There must be some transform transfer forms for me to sign. No, there aren't any forms for you to sign. All I need is my computerized class schedule from Lake Windsor Middle. No form, no mothers. Mom was staring across the street and not liking what she saw. There were two small groups of guys karate kicking at each other outside the building. There were larger groups too, menacing looking gangs, just standing around watching the karate kickers go at it. Mom said, oh, look at that. Why isn't this area being supervised? Hey, it's no big deal. It's just what some guys do, Mom. At the entrance to the school, what kind of first impression is that? They do whatever, they do that wherever they are. Lighten up. I'll see you at five. Yeah, if you live. I walked around the karate kickers and the gangsters and pulled open a heavy wooden door. I saw that I could go straight toward the first floor classrooms or I could climb the stairs on the left toward what seemed to be the office. I went left and started up the worn marble stairs thinking how unusual it was to find stairs like these in Florida. For that matter, the whole building was unusual. I, I hadn't been on the third floor of anything since we moved here. The school's office was located at the top of the first floor. The principal herself was standing just inside the glass doors. She walked right up to me and said, I'm Dr. Johnson, who are you? Paul Fisher, ma'am. And you're from Lake Windsor Middle School, I presume? Yes, ma'am. She took my schedule from me and read it carefully and then she turned, and, turned around and called into one of the side offices. Teresa, come out here and take this one. A small stiff skinny girl with brown hair tied back in a ponytail came out of the side room. Dr. Johnson said, this is Paul Fisher. Paul, this is Teresa Cruz. She'll be your escort for your first day at Tangerine Middle School. She'll be your escort for the second day too, if you want. After that, you'll be responsible for getting around on your own. But Teresa will continue to be a resource person for you for any questions that you might have. I said, all right, thank you, ma'am. I paused. I don't know why, but I felt I had to say it. I said, it's nice to be here. Dr. Johnson gave me a huge smile. Well, it's nice to have you here. It was pretty much downhill after that. Teresa Cruz had very little or nothing to say. I followed her silently from class to class. She would introduce me quietly to each teacher, and we would sit down together. I tell you what, it was eerie like a science fiction story, like I had entered some kind of mere universe. The subjects and the class times are exactly the same as Lake Windsor Middle, but the rooms and the people are completely different. Tangerine Middle is a tougher school, no doubt about it. I got real nervous whenever we went out in the hall. If anything's going to happen to in a school like this, it's going to happen in the hall. One big guy took his forearm and swatted me out of the way like I was some kind of gnat. But I didn't take it personally. I just kept my head down, followed Teresa, and went where I was supposed to go. My classes are all on the second floor. Basically, third floor is entirely sixth grade. Second floor is seventh grade. And first floor is eighth grade, with a few exceptions. The first floor also has the cafeterium, cafeterium which obviously doubles as the cafeteria and the auditorium, right? It's pretty gross. The cafetorium has a kitchen at the near end and a stage at the far end. In between are rows of wooden tables with wooden folding chairs. It's loud in there, like some old prison movie. Teresa stayed with me when we passed through the lunch line in the cafetorium. She even sat down with me to eat. To eat, but not to talk. I tried to get the lowdown on some of my new teachers, the inside stuff, but Teresa wasn't cooperating. I'd say something like, so, how's this Mrs. Potter for science? And she'd say, pretty good. How's Mr. Scott? Pretty good. 
and so on. I finally gave up and ate my lunch, but afterwards I tried with questions that meant the most to me. Do you know anything about the soccer team? Teresa pulled back a little and actually looked at me, surprised. She nodded and said, oh yeah, yeah. My brother Tino plays on the team. Yeah, he's an eighth grader? No, he's my twin brother. He's in seventh grade too. Oh, well, I was thinking about going out to practice today to see if I could get on the team. Teresa thought about that. Yeah, you could do that. Tino won't be there today though. He's still suspended. Victor, Hernando, one of those got none of those guys will be here today, but I guess they'll still have practice. I knew the answer to the next question, but I asked anyway. Why won't any of them be there? Oh, they got into some trouble over at the carnival. Ms. Bright grabbed the whole bunch of them while they were sitting here eating lunch. She brought them up to Dr. Johnson and they all got suspended for three days. So they'll all be back tomorrow? Yeah, Tito, Victor, Fernando, those are all those guys. And they're all starters. They're who? They're starting players on the soccer team? Teresa answered with pride, oh yeah. Victor, he's kind of like the star. Victor and Maya, they're the two stars, you know? They scored most of the goals. Tino scored two goals last year. I think Victor scored 16 and Maya scored 15. They both made it on the Owl County team. And who's the goaltender? The goaltender is Chandra Thomas. Chandra? That's a girl, right? Yeah, Chandra's a girl. Maya's a girl, too. What? Don't you have a boys team and a girls team? No, there's only one team. Boys, girls, they can play on it. They're mostly boys, but some of the girls are good. They've played in the Y League all their lives and stuff. Maya learned to play over in England. That's why she got so good. I was trying hard to process this information, I said again. So, Chandra's a girl? Teresa seemed to be enjoying this. Yeah, there's four girls. Chandra, Maya, Maya's cousin Nita, and Dolly. They're all on the team, and then there's Tino, Victor, Hernando, and about 10 other guys. They're good. They were second in the county last year. After lunch, we went back to our routine with Teresa only speaking when she introduced me to a teacher but at least I had broken the ice. I was starting to get a picture of this new place and I was glad to come here. I'd say the most obvious difference between my new school and my old one is this. At Tangerine Middle, the minorities are the majority. I have no problem with that. I've always felt like a minority because of my eyes. The next most obvious difference is the building itself. It's old. I have no problem with that either, except that it has a disinfectant smell that kind of gags you. The textbooks are old too, really old, and they have stuff written in them. The teachers seem to adjust to have adjusted to this by now by not using them much. A couple of teachers have talked about class projects and group projects that are due. I guess I'll find out about those things soon enough. I also figured out why Teresa was assigned to be my guide. We have exactly the same schedule, mostly advanced classes. My days went smoothly enough until seventh period when I had an unpleasant surprise. My language arts teacher is Mrs. Murrow. Get this, Mrs. Murrow is married to Mr. Murrow, the head of guidance at Lake Windsor Middle. I'm going to work hard at not being noticed in that class. I don't wanna risk his hearing my name and announcing, that kid's handicapped, he needs an IEP. After the bell rang, Teresa and I walked downstairs and out the back door. To the left behind the baseball stop was a green scoreboard. Across the top was written Tangerine Middle School, home of the War Eagles. We crossed over the bus lanes and headed down to a soccer field that was circled by an asphalt running track. I could see a mixed group, girls and boys, taking turns shooting the ball at a big tall girl in the goal. I said, that's Chandra, right? Yeah, in the goal, that's Chandra. Who are those other girls? Who? Oh, you mean the ones standing together? Yeah, that's Maya and Nita. Maya's the tall one, they're cousins. They're always hanging out together. And who's the other big girl? That's Dolly, Dolly Elias. Her brother Ignacio was the captain last year. Teresa pointed at her and called, what's up, Dolly? It was the first time I heard her raise her voice. Dolly waved back. Is she your friend? Yeah, she rides home with Luis and Tino and me. Is Luis on the team? No, no, Luis is grown up. He's our big brother. He comes and picks us all up after practice. He picks up Hernando and Victor, too. 
We crossed the field in front of Dolly, just as she drove a perfect corner kick five feet off the ground. Teresa walked up to up walked me up to a tall, powerful looking in a looking woman in a maroon warm up suit. She said, "Miss Bright, this is Paul Fisher from Lake Windsor Middle School. He wants to play on your soccer team." Miss Bright had to look down to meet me in my eyes. She said, "How long are you going to be with us, Paul?" Three months, ma'am, at least through the soccer season. Uh-huh. Have you played soccer before? Oh, yes, ma'am, all my life. I was starting goalie for my last school back in Houston. Uh-huh. Well, let me explain something to you right from Jump Street. You can be on my team, but you're not going to take the place of one of my starting players and then go back to your Lake Windsor Middle School. That's not going to happen. If you want to play backup to one of my starting players, then I'll be glad to have you. Yes, ma'am. That's what I want to do. Good. I need a backup and goal. Grab that red shirt and go down to the far end. We're about to start the scrimmage. Yes, ma'am. I ran down to the far goal and set my bag down and pulled on my protect protective gear. With half the starters missing, the scrimmage was kind of a joke. I only touched the ball once. Needless to say, no one scored on me. Chandra had the same kind of game down on her end. I can't describe how great it feels to have another chance. Nothing, nothing at all is going to bother me. I'll play back up to Chandra Thomas and be happy about it. Goalies get hurt a lot. They need backups more than anybody else. I've been hurt. I've been hurt. Had my hand stepped on, had the wind knocked out of me, and someone had to fill in for me. It happens all the time. I'll get into some games. No question about that. Near the end of practice, I noticed a familiar truck pull up. It was the same pickup that I had seen at the carnival, the vintage green one with Tomas Cruz Groves, Tangerine, Florida, written on the side. A guy in jeans with a plaid work shirt got out and walked over to Teresa. He walked with a bad limp. This had to be her brother, Luis. He had the same dark brown hair and eyes as Teresa. His head and hands seemed very large, even from where I was standing. After practice, Teresa and Dolly climbed into the front of the truck with him and drove away. I gathered my gear, walked back into the building alone. Just as I was about to push through the wooden front door, I heard, there you are, honey. I turned and saw mom coming down the stairs from the second floor office. I watched until she put her arm around my shoulder and started to lead me out. I had a panicked feeling like my heart would stop beating, but I managed to ask quietly, mom, what were you doing up there? We crossed the road and reached our car before she replied, Dr. Johnson's secretary called me today, Mr. Know-it-all. It turns out you do need your paperwork from Lake Windsor Middle School in order to transfer here. My heart began to ache. My paperwork, that's right. I had to drive up to Lake Windsor and get it and you can't imagine the chaos in that office. Mom, who did you talk to? Mr. Murrow, of course, he gave me your file and I delivered it here, and now you're official. Mama unlocked the doors and we both climbed in. I looked at her angrily. I'm officially what? A student at Tangerine Middle School. A visually impaired student? An IEP student? No, nothing of the kind. I closed my eyes in despair. So what happens when the head of guidance here opens my file and sees my IEP? Nothing happens, Paul. There is no IEP in your file. Mom started the car and put it in gear. As we U-turned in front of the school, she added very carefully, your IEP form disappeared somewhere between Lake Windsor and here. It's the kind of thing we should probably never mention again. We rode in silence back through the downtown area to the highway. I finally said, Maybe it was an osprey. What? Maybe an osprey got a hold of it. What are you talking about? You know, my IEP. Maybe it's feathering some osprey nest right now. Mom finally got the joke and smiled. That would be a nice decorating touch. Yeah, inconsistent with the scheme of the other nests, but a nice touch. Yeah, something like that. As we headed west on Route 22, I began to feel a real sense of hope about Tangerine Middle School. After all, it was great luck getting Teresa as a guide. Getting mom to ditch my paperwork was beyond luck. It was another miracle. 
things actually seem to be going my way. Finally, it's the Paul Fisher soccer dream. I wonder if Eric feels that way about his life here, but I wonder too if Mike Costello felt that way when he was leaning against that goal post. Tuesday, September 19th. I followed Teresa all morning again. Another big kid, a different one, banged me into a locker. Teresa didn't pay attention to it, so I tried not to either. I followed her into the lunchroom again, and we sat down at the same table as yesterday. Everything seemed to be cool, but then everything got uncool real fast. A bunch of guys came over. I recognized a few of them from the carnival. Their leader, a big stocky guy with curly hair and real oily skin, said to Teresa, What's he doing here? She said, This is the one I told you about, the one who wants to play on your soccer team. The leader eyeballed me and snorted. Ha, you? You think you can play on my team? What do you think this is, Lake Windsor Middle School? You think we gotta take every chump who shows up? You think because your mommy buys you a jock strap, you're automatically on my team? I looked at him calmly. I didn't really know if he was get if he was putting me on or if he meant what he was saying. He looked like he was about to dump his lunch tray on my head. Teresa spoke up. Chill out, Victor. I'm trying to eat. Victor took the seat directly across from me in my face. He continued, Lake Windsor, that team's a joke. We're going to bust you up this year. You got that big Italian kid, right? Thinks he's bad. He's a joke, man. He's nothing. And the rest of you guys, that makes you less than nothing. Less than zero. That's you, Lake Windsor, man. Less than zero. You're a negative integer. He turned to one of the other guys and slapped hands with him. Victor then turned his attention to his hamburger and took a big bite. I figured he wasn't really serious. He was just messing with me. I decided to take a chance. I said, hey, what do you expect? We play in a sinkhole. Victor shot an angry look at me and then he started laughing, nearly choking on his burger. The other guys took their cue from him and started laughing too. That's right, man. You crawled out of some kind of sinkhole. That's right. He took a drink of soda. Hey, what's that big kid's name? Gino. Right, Gino. Hey, Dino. We've got a Gino. We've got a Dino. Victor reached across, high five with Teresa's twin brother, and went on, I heard about your Gino. You ever hear about me? You ever hear of Victor Guzman? Yeah, I heard about you. I heard you scored 16 goals last year. I heard you are all county. Victor took another bite and said, you heard right. Everybody was quiet after that, so I said, I worked out with the team yesterday. Fool, you didn't work out with the team. The team wasn't there yesterday. I looked at Teresa, I decided to play dumb. Right, right, where were you guys? Victor snorted. Tell him where we were, Dino. Dino answered to nobody in particular. We were in jail. They put us in vandalism jail. My stomach suddenly knotted up. I said, what? They put you in, in a jail cell? Tino looked at me like I had just said the stupidest thing he had ever heard and I was the biggest loser he had ever met. Another kid at the table said, yeah, I heard you guys got busted. What was up with that? Tino answered, self-defense, man. Victor laughed through a mouthful of hamburger. He swallowed and said, right, right, self-defense. Me, me and Hernando saw the whole thing. Hernando added, self-defense man, all the way. Victor continued, did you go to the freak show at the carnival? Did you see that dude with the big scar down his cheek and the big axe in his hand? Axe man was his name. Me and Hernando are, all, are reading all up about this guy in the sign. He chopped people up, right? Hernando filled in. He chopped a whole bunch of people up a long time ago. Right, so we're reading about him and Dino comes around the corner real fast and gets scared. Scared? No way, Dino protested. So he screams and jumps up in the air and karate kicks this axe man dude right in the stomach, right? An axe man snaps in half. Right in half, man, said Hernando. He's laying all over the floor. So we start yelling. You killed Axeman, you killed Axeman, let's get out of here. And we all run out of that place. Victor, Tino, and Hernando start rollicking with laughter, reliving the moment. 
My stomach starts to nod again. I said, so how did you get busted? Victor stopped laughing. How'd we get busted? He glared at Dino. Stupid Dino here. Dino snapped at him. Shut up, fool. You shut up. He's carrying a soccer ball around all day, showing off, you know, like he's got something to show off. I told you to shut up. Yeah, you told me that. So they call up Betty Bright and they tell her that it was soccer players that trashed Axman. She knows right away who it was, so she nails us. The conversation soon turned to things I didn't know about. I concentrated on my lunch thinking, hm, maybe you actually got away with ratting out these guys. I certainly hoped so. As soon as I got to practice that afternoon, I could tell that things were different. Victor Guzman is the leader out there. Everybody accepts that. He spurs on the offense all the time. He talks trash to the defense all the time. He wants the ball all the time. Lake Windsor Middle had about 30 kids on its team. Tangerine has 15. I make it 16. They don't even have enough players for two scrimmage teams. The starting front line plays against the starting defense. The other four kids play behind the front line, feeding them the ball. I was in the far goal again. I may as well have been in Houston. I never touched the ball until right before the end of practice when the coach called Chandra over to get her, over to talk to her. The coach yelled down to my end of the field. You got Paul Fisher, get up here, get in goal. I sprinted up and took my place on the goal line. So far, the front line had scored four times. But Chandra had made about 15 saves, some of them really impressive. Now it was my turn to face the starters. Victor, Maya, Dino are the main strikers. They play in the middle of the front line. Nita and a kid they call Henry D play out on the wings. Victor started in on me right away. Paul Fisher, hey, Fisherman, you think this is trout here, trout, trout season here or something? You think you're some kind of tuna catching tournament here? Some of the other kids started laughing. You're gonna be wearing those glasses on the other side of your head if you think that. This ain't no Lake Windsor Middle School, sucka. You're facing the War Eagles now. Nita set the ball up in the corner. She lofted a corner kick into the center to Maya who controlled it and passed it along the ground to Victor. Victor caught it at full stride and, dove, and drove a shot high and hard toward the goal. I saw it coming all the way. I sprang off my heels forward and to the left. The ball stuck in my outstretched hands like they were Velcro. I landed flat on the ground, belly fully extended, holding onto the ball. A great save. I looked over to check Betty Bright's reaction. She had her head down, talking earnestly to Chandra. She had missed the whole thing. Suddenly, wham! A foot came slicing in front of my face driving the ball out of my hands and into the goal. Victor pumped his fist in the air. He leaned over me and, and yelled, you taking a nap, Fisherman? Is this nap time at Lake Windsor Middle School? Too bad, you missed my goal. Dino came up behind him, shaking his head. That's no goal, man, that's bogus. Victor turned on him. What are you talking about? That goal counts. No chance, that ball was dead. Yeah, you'd be dead if you don't shut your mouth. You shut your mouth, chump. Hey. Come here and shut it for me. Dino lunged, lunged at Victor. They bounced off each other and squared off in a snarling karate kicking scene right above my head. Hernando tried to get between them and break it up and Maya and Anita drifted out of the way. The coach looked up, blew her whistle. She screamed at them. You two didn't learn a thing, did you? Do you need another three days off? Do you need to miss the opening game of the season? The combatants stopped fighting and glared at each other. I see one more punch over there and you two are back on suspension, you hear me? Victor and Dino continued to glare at each other, but the worst of it seemed to be over. The coach blew a whistle again. That's enough for today. Everybody get here early tomorrow and giving out the uniforms. I picked myself up off the ground and followed everybody off the field. When we got to the bus lanes, the old green truck pulled up Teresa and Dolly got into the front while Tino, Hernando, and Victor piled into the back. All seemed to be forgiven with them. They were already laughing about something, probably about me. When I walked out to the front of the building, I saw Maya and Nito waiting for their ride. I nodded as I walked past them. Maya said to me in a musical voice, that was an excellent save. Oh, thank you. The goal would not have counted. You had the ball in your grasp. Uh-huh. The whistle would have blown. Thank you. 
I know better than that, though. I shouldn't have been lying there posing for pictures like that. I should have protected the ball. A blue Mercedes pulled up, and the two girls got in. Mom pulled right up behind. She said, so, are you on the team? Yeah, I think I am. She jerked her head toward the blue Mercedes. Are those girls on it? Yeah. Really? Girls? Are they the only ones? No, nope, there are two more. Mom seemed genuinely impressed. How nice to have girls on your team. That's nice. As we drove away, I relived everything that happened at lunchtime and at practice. Every word, every action. I thought to myself, it's not my team, Mom. Not yet, anyway. Not by a long shot. And it's definitely not nice, but it's where I want to be.